Kate de Camillo by Casey Williams. Katrina Elizabeth de Camillo was born March 25, 1964 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Kate suffered from chronic pneumonia at a time when geographical cures were still being prescribed, so after her fifth winter in an oxygen tent, the doctor told her parents to take her to a warmer climate. So, in 1969, Kate, her brother Kurt, and her mother moved to sunny Claremont, Florida. Her father was to join them in Florida after he sold his orthodontist practice, but he never rejoined his family in Florida. Kate once said, There, I absorbed the speech patterns and cadences of life in a small southern town. I did not know it at the time, but Florida and pneumonia gave me a great gift, a voice in which to tell my stories. When asked about her writing, Kate said, I think being ill contributed to my development as a writer. I learned early on to entertain myself by reading. I learned to rely on stories as a way of understanding the world. I read everything I could. Some of Kate's favorite books were The Secret Garden by Frances Burnett, The Yearling by Marjorie Rawlings, Ribsy by Beverly Clearly, and a book called Somebody Else's Shoes by Florence Lowe. These authors would later become Kate's inspiration with her own writing. E.B. White once said, All that I hope to say in books, all that I ever hope to say, is that I love the world. Kate DiCamillo says that is the way she feels too. Kate DiCamillo attended the University of Florida and majored in English. That is when she first decided to become a writer. After graduating from the University of Florida, Kate began working various jobs, one being Disney World. At the age of 30, Kate decided to move to Minneapolis, Minnesota. After moving to Minneapolis, DiCamillo began working at The Bookman, a wholesale bookstore. That is when she started reading children's books and decided to try writing for a younger audience. While working at The Bookman, she met a sales representative from Candlewick Press. She told the agent that she cannot get into the door at Candlewick because she does not have a publisher and they will not look at unsolicited manuscripts. The sales rep told Kate that if she were to give a manuscript, she will give it to an editor, which was the first stepping stone to her magnificent career. Kate DiCamillo's books focus on realistic fiction and commonly confront the themes of death, separation, or overcoming an obstacle. Kate wrote Because of Win Dixie during the worst winter on record in Minnesota. She was cold and lonely and homesick for Florida. She couldn't afford to go home, but she was able to write a book that took her there. Also, it was the first time in her life that she had been without a dog. She was living in an apartment where no dogs were allowed, but there weren't any rules about imaginary dogs. So she made a dog up, the best dog she could think of, a smelly, friendly, big old mutt. Because of when Dixie tells a story of Opal and her father, the preacher, who moved to Naomi, Florida. Opal goes into the Winn-Dixie supermarket and comes out with a dog. A big, ugly, suffering dog with a sterling sense of humor. A dog she dubs Winn-Dixie. Because of Winn-Dixie, the preacher tells Opal ten things about her absent mother, one for each year Opal has been alive. Winn-Dixie is better at making friends than anyone Opal has ever known. Opal spends all that sweet summer collecting stories about her new friends and thinking about her mother. But because of when Dixie, or perhaps because she has grown, Opal learns to let go, just a little, and that friendship and forgiveness can sneak up on you like a sudden summer storm. In 2000, Because of when Dixie was awarded the Josette Frank Award. In 2001, Because of when Dixie was awarded the Newberry Honor Book. In 2002, Because of When Dixie was awarded the Dorothy Canfield Fisher Children's Book Award. In 2005, Because of When Dixie was released as a film by 20th Century Fox. Kate's second novel, The Tiger Rising, was published in 2001. 
The Tiger Rising is about a boy named Rob, his father, and their move to Lister, Florida to try to begin a new life without Rob's mother, who recently died from cancer. The boy goes through his days like a sleepwalker with little or no visible emotion. With the arrival of a new student, Sistine Bailey, Rob's self-contained world begins to crumble. He and Sistine are both friendless and victims of the cruelty often shown outsiders at school. The principal, worried about contagion, decides that Rob should remain at home until the rash on his leg improves. Rob appreciates the respite and Sistine appears daily on the pretense of bringing him his homework. When the boy finds a caged tiger in the woods, he recognizes a similarity between himself and the animal. Then the sleazy owner of the motel where Rob and his dad are living gives him the responsibility of feeding the creature, and Rob realizes he finally holds in his hands the keys to freedom. The Tiger Rising was awarded the 2001 National Book Award for Young People's Literature. Kate's third novel, The Tale of Despero, was published in 2003. The Tale of Despero is a story of an unusual hero, a mouse. Despero was born with his eyes open and lives his life that way, looking for adventure and love and places other mice fear to go. For this reason, Despero finds himself trapped in the dungeon of a castle while the girl he loves is facing certain desolation at the hands of a disappointed rat and a forgotten child. Despero must save the day despite being less than two inches tall. The three characters will embark on a journey that will lead them down into a horrible dungeon, up into a glittering castle, and ultimately into each other's lives. In 2004, The Tale of Despero was awarded the Newbery Award. The Tale of Despero was released by Universal Pictures in December 2008. Kate's fourth novel, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, was published in 2006. The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane is about a house on Egypt Street, and inside that house lived a China rabbit named Edward Tulane. The rabbit was very pleased with himself, and for good reason. He was owned by a girl named Abilene, who treated him with the utmost care and adored him completely. And then one day, he was lost. Edward Tulane embarks on an extraordinary journey, from the depths of the ocean to the net of a fisherman, from the top of a garbage heap to the fireside of a hobo's camp, from the bedside of an ailing child to the bustling streets of Memphis. And along the way, readers are shown a true miracle. Even a heart of the most breakable kind can learn to love, to lose, and to love again. In 2006, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane was awarded the Boston Globe Horn Book Award for Fiction. The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane was optioned by New Line Cinema and is in early pre-production. Kate's fifth novel, The Magician's Elephant, was published in 2009. The Magician's Elephant tells the story of a fortune teller's tent that appears in the market square of the city of Baltice and an orphan, Peter Augustus Duchesne, knows the question that he needs to ask. Does his sister still live? And if so, how can he find her? The fortune teller's mysterious answer is an elephant. An elephant will lead him there. Peter and the elephant set off a chain of events so remarkable, so impossible, that readers will hardly dare to believe it's true. After writing three novels for older children, Kate DiCamillo introduced a new and funny early chapter book series for young readers. The Mercy Watson series features a pig with a yin for buttered toast. The first book was published in 2005. In 2006, Mercy Watson Goes for a Ride is published. This is the second book in the Mercy Watson series. Mercy Watson Goes for a Ride tells a story of Mr. and Mrs. Watson's wonder, Mercy, who loves nothing more than to ride in the car. It takes a fair amount of nudging and bribing and a you are such a good sport, darling, to get the portly pig out of the driver's seat. But once the convertible is on the road, Mercy loves the feel of the wind tickling her ears and the sun on her snout. One day, the Watson's motoring ritual takes an unexpected turn, when their elderly neighbor, Baby Lincoln pops up in the back seat in hope of some folly and adventure, and in the chaos that ensues, an exuberant Mercy ends up behind the wheel. 
Mercy Watson Goes for a Ride was awarded the 2007 Giesel Honor Book. Kate DiCamillo also wrote another early chapter book named Bink and Golly published in 2010. Bink and Golly are two precious little girls, one tiny, one tall, and both utterly irrepressible. Setting out from their super deluxe treehouse and powered by plenty of peanut butter for Bink and pancakes for Golly, they share three comical adventures involving painfully bright socks, an impromptu trek to the Andes, and a most unlikely marvelous companion. No matter where their roller skates take them, at the end of the day, they will always be the very best of friends. Bink and Golly was awarded the Theodore Giesel Award in 2011. Kate DiCamillo has also written two picture books, Great Joy in 2007 and Louise, The Adventures of a Chicken, published in 2008. Kate DiCamillo once said, If you want to be a writer, write a little bit every day. Pay attention to the world around you. Stories are hiding, waiting everywhere. You just have to open your eyes and your heart.